Okay, so this is the final video lecture in the nodal and mesh analysis series where we are going to explore solving a circuit using either nodal or mesh analysis in the frequency domain. So uh, let's take this example circuit where we have a couple sources, both are current sources, one independent source, IS. IS is given as a sinusoid, specifically 6 cosine 200T plus 15 degrees in units amps. We have a dependent current source that's dependent on V sub 0, so it's 0.1 V V0 amps of current, where V0 is a voltage across this 20 ohm uh, resistor, which happens to also be in parallel with that other source and the 50 microfarad capacitor. Our objective is to find the current I0 or I sub 0 is a function of time that's through the 40 ohm resistor. Note that this problem has resistors, a capacitor, and an inductor. So if we do this problem in the time domain, we're going to have a second order differential equation. It'll be fairly complicated to solve in the time domain. So the, the first thing that we want to do is convert this circuit into the frequency domain. So let's redraw the frequency domain equivalent at a frequency of omega equals 200 radians per second. And that comes straight from omega from the driving sinusoid. Since we only have one frequency in, in our original source, we're going to have one frequency in our result. So note that the phasor for current source IS 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 bar. All we need is the magnitude, which is 6, and the angle, which is 15 degrees. So that would be the phasor in polar form. And in rectangular form, that can be expressed as approximately 5.8 plus J 1.6 amps. Next, the, we need the impedances, especially of our reactive elements. Of course, our impedances of our resistors are just the resistance. They're purely real, so we don't really need to write those. But the impedance of our capacitor, ZC, is given as 1 over J omega C. So that's 1 over J times omega of 200 times our capacitance, which is 50 times 10 to the minus 6. That works out to be minus J 100 ohms. Just as a sanity check, it is a capacitor. It should have a negative impedance. And then finally, the impedance of our inductor should be given as J omega L. So J times 200 times an inductance of 100 times 10 to the minus 3 Henry's equates to J times 20 ohms. Sanity check, it should be a positive impedance positive reactance to be more specific. Okay, so our frequency domain equivalent is as follows. We have, we converted our sources to phasors. Our solution will be a phasor. And our passive elements are now expressed in impedances, which all have units of ohms. So we can use any analysis technique now to solve this problem. So nodal or mesh. So if we were to do nodal, it looks like we've got three essential nodes. One, two, three. So that's going to be two KCL equations. And of course we have one dependent source, so that's one additional equation for the dependent source. But that's going to be common for both the nodal and mesh methods. So in mesh, we've got one, two, three, four meshes, but two of those meshes are known. So mesh one right here is known to be IS. Mesh at the top right corner is known to be 0.1 V0. So that subtract off two knowns gives us two KVLs plus our dependent uh, variable. So they're roughly equivalent in complexity. 
since we did the last example with mesh, I'm going to do this example using nodal analysis. So our first objective with nodal analysis is to identify the essential nodes already done for us. We've got, we'll call them node A, B, and C. We need to choose one of these to be our ground node. We don't have any voltage sources, so the best choice is probably going to be the one with the most number of elements attached to it. We've got one, two, three, four elements attached to C, three elements attached to B, one, two, three, four, five elements attached to A. So let's choose A to be our ground. When I do that, that becomes zero volts. C becomes VC volts and B becomes VB volts. So I need to write a KCL expression at my unknown essential node voltages, which are VC and VB. First, the KCL at node B. I'm going to again assume all my currents are exiting, so I'm not going to draw my currents up there. Um, I've got current 0.1 V0 exiting that node. I've got the current through the 40 ohm resistor which can be defined as VB minus zero over 40. And I've got the current through my inductor as VB, and these should be labeled as VB bar because they are phasers. Let me go back and add those just so we're consistent. But it's VB minus the neighbor, which is VC, over the impedance of that path, which is ZL. And that must equal zero. So next is our KCL at VC. We should have four terms because there's four elements connected to it. First, we have current IS exiting. Then the current through the 20 ohm resistor is given as VC minus zero over 20. We have the current through the capacitor, which is VC minus zero over ZC. And then the current through the inductor given as VC minus VB over the impedance of the inductor. That must equal zero. So looking at this, we have two equations, unknowns VB and VC, and then V naught. V naught is unknown because it shows up in our dependent variable expression. So we need that extra expression that describes the relationship of our dependent variable V naught. V naught appears across the 20 ohm resistor. We're going to try to re-express V naught in terms of our nodal voltages. So note that one end of V naught is attached to zero, the other end is attached to VC, so we can simply write V naught as equal to zero volts minus the other end, which is VC. In other words, V naught equals negative VC. And of course, the objective of the problem was to actually find current I naught, so we should write an expression for that current I naught which is given across the 40 ohm resistor, so I naught can be expressed as the voltage potential across the 40 ohm resistor, which is given the direction that I naught has been provided would be zero minus phasor VB, and then divided by the resistance. So we have a system of four equations. We can enter this into MATLAB. We should use the rectangular form of all of our phasers and impedances, and that's why on the last slide we define them as such. And doing so, we can find that the rectangular form of our uh, output phaser I naught will be 4.5 minus J 5.7 amperes. That converted to polar form will result in 7.3 at an angle of negative 52 degrees amps. And so from this form, the polar form, we can readily convert back to the time domain. So the time domain output of I sub zero is the real part of the phasor I zero. We take the magnitude of that, 7.3 times the cosine. If this is at an at a angular frequency of 200 radians per second times time, minus the phase from the straight from the polar form of our phasor output, 
and that would be our solution. 7.3 cosine 200t minus 52 degrees.